You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations. Still fashionable to be covered in paint splatters, boy here. And I've been itching to show you this since I saw it in beta slash beta. I've been around Americans too much. I don't know if it's beta or beta at this point, but since I saw this for the first time, I've been itching to show this because this is amazing. This is Vredgo. Vredgo is a new way to send your models out of the company to show somebody your data without exposing intellectual property, without them measuring, without them printing, without them being able to reverse engineer anything, without them seeing the tree structure, without them seeing any kind of property information or metadata, but them seeing what you want them to see and seeing it damn flipping well as well. Everyone's gonna wanna want this. Downside is this is red professional. And Vred Professionals at the higher end of the pricing structure, mate. That's something you're gonna have to think about, but you get a lot more with Fred than just this. Take a look at it, seriously. It's an amazing piece of kit. But I wanna show you Vred Go. Let's hop on over to Autodesk Inventor. So with Autodesk Inventor, uh, this isn't unique to Inventor. This can be Pro Engineer, Katia, SolidWorks, NX, any 3D CAD application. Uh, but you take your, your native 3D file and then you save it as is. Hop on over to Autodesk Fred and then you just import the original model. You don't have to translate it, you just import it. You set up your scene, you apply your textures, you apply your materials, you make it look nice. That's 10 minutes of work for anyone who knows what they're doing. It's really quick. Once you've got your scene set up in Autodesk Vred, you go to File and then Publish Vred Go. You get a dialog box where you can configure a couple of settings that the end user is gonna be stuck with. For example, which mode they're gonna get. There's two modes, desktop and VR. Desktop mode means they open up an, basically Vredgo gives them an executable, right? You get given a single executable file. So there's no file format or anything like that. It's an executable that you end up with. And that executable, when it's opened, in desktop mode will open up as a single window that looks like that. They use their mouse to navigate around. Look at it, that's it. In VR mode, the executable launches up Steam VR or Oculus, and they can look at your model in VR. I need to do a separate video on that because that's awesome. So I'll do a separate video on that, but two modes, desktop and VR resolution settings, uh, fixed resolution, full size resolution, or automatic, that's goes that's sort of straightforward. Uh, the security, this is a bit of a, uh, each Vred Go file has an expiration date. By default, it's 60 days, and that's the maximum that a Vred Go file can exist for. You can set that lower, so you can say, right, I'm gonna send the client a file, and the client only has seven days, for example, to look at the file. After seven days, the file will expire. Maximum is 60 days. It used to be 30, but we managed to kind of talk them into increasing that up to 60. Ah, whether it goes higher in the future, I don't know, but you can password protect the Vred Go file as well, so the recipient needs to know the password. Uh, and once that's done, you click OK, uh, tell it where you want to save the Red Go file. So we'll drop this on the desktop. We'll just close one, three, four, five. So I don't know which one it is. And then within a matter of seconds, because that's how long it takes the file, you've got yourself an executable that you can send to the client. Now these executables are too big to email. They range from anywhere between sort of 80 megabytes to a couple of gigabytes, depending on the HDRI backgrounds you've got embedded into the files. So they can be quite big. Too big to email, but certainly manageable via cloud storage. Right, so once the scene's done, and it should be done in a couple of seconds, there it is. What I'm gonna do is hop on over to my desktop, right, and there's the one, two, three, four, five file. When I double click that, it's gonna open up Red Go, and I'm probably gonna start going, I'm gonna start going, because my screen recording software just doesn't like this. This canes the CPU, by the way, so I'm gonna start jerking around it. Uh, it's just one of those things. But the, the end user doesn't need a license, they don't need any prerequisites. They don't need .NET Framework, they don't need any C++ redistributables, nothing like that. They just open up the file and away they go. Uh, and if this was the VR file, this would be opening up Steam VR right now. It's amazing. It's amazing. They've done a splendid job with this. Uh, there's, so many, there's so many use cases for this. It's, it, it opens up so many opportunities. But there you go. There's Red Go. This is now a viewable that the client can look at. There's no tree structure. If I right click, I get the option to change the rendering mode from GPU to CPU based on what kind of laptop or machine the end user has. This will work on CPU graphics, not very well, but it will. 
to have to crank the settings down a little bit. You can embed graphical settings in here so the end user can have a better experience. Uh, but there's very minimal settings on the right click menu. Other than that, there is nothing. It is literally a viewable, but a flipping damn good one, man. Look at that, mate. Move over to the left, nothing there, nothing to the right, no tree structure, no slicing, no taking measurements, just a damn good viewable that will last for 60 days. Think of what you could do with this. Put it on a thumbstick, send it out to a client, hand it out at an expo, all kinds of things. Another one that I've got here, which is uh, of a car. This is one that Autodesk put together. Uh, this one has a couple of bits of customization plugged into it. And this one's desktop mode. Uh, and when it opens up, you'll see a nice HDRI background behind this one with nice camera effects and stuff. And it kind of gets your mind working as to what the potential opportunities there are with this and where you could possibly put it to use. But on a, on a decent enough PC, I mean, it takes it takes a few seconds to open up, but it's 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 pretty quick. And then, hey, look at this. Oh, our camera orbit pivot point needs reset. There we go. Look at that. It's absolutely stunning. For a viewable, mate, for a viewable, that opens off one file. This is absolutely stunning. Right, so I said there's a bit of customization in here. What the Autodesk guys have done is they pre, they've pre-scripted in, and this is all done in very professional, a little hamburger menu on the left where you can actually change configurations so this is changing the color of some of the materials, interior color, exterior color, and also the environment can be changed as well using this little menu. That's a trigger that changes a setting or a variable in red. That can trigger animations as well. It can swap out parts so you can switch configurations. You can Anything your model can be at, any state it can be at, can be triggered by these menus. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. It's Python script and you can do pretty much anything with it. That's Fred Go. I want to keep this as quick as possible. It's not going to be available to everyone. It's not cheap, but if you work in a company where they potentially have a use for this and licenses is something which they will buy if, it's, if there's a business case for it, seriously look at this because it does a lot more than just Fred Go. If you're a student, you can get Vred Professional on the student program. So seriously suggest you take a look at that because it's just fun to play with, if nothing else, if you're a student. Right, mate, that's it. That's all I've got. I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. I'll see you next one. Doodles. <laughs>